Welcome to Jags Drive Time with Ashlyn Sullivan, John Osher, and Brian Sexton. Jags Drive Time starts right now. I take it last year's last year, and and we're starting we're starting fresh. We're starting new, and we're starting from the ground floor, and, and that's what I'm excited about. And that's that's why I think just just moving forward, big picture. That's that's the that's the great thing about you know taking over with with having a young quarterback. You know, much like what we did in, in Philly. You know, with with Carson and, and how in his second year, you know, we saw the growth and and everything in him. And, and Trevor's coming into that that second year this year, and and looking forward to working with him this spring. So. Um, I think sky's the limit, you know. Um, obviously, we, we've got some work to do. Um, nothing nothing is perfect, and uh, we're looking forward to that. The start of a new year officially for the Jaguars' new head coach, Doug Peterson, and this entire coaching staff, as this is the first event where they are all together here at the NFL Scout and Combine in Indianapolis, live from Radio Row. Welcome into Jaguars Drive Time. Ashlyn Sullivan and John Osier here for you. Our first day of coverage, and... It has been a long day, but Tuesday is always the longest day because Trent Baalke and Doug Peterson speak to the media, and it is a big day here in the convention center. Well, it's been a long day, and notably, it's our first time back. It's the NFL's first time back mm -hmm. at this event in two years. So there is a feeling of uh, you're seeing people around saying hello to each other that haven't seen each other you know, in two years in a lot of cases. So the convention of the league, which is what this is, is back. And uh, you know, the Jaguars are in business with – what we now know is the uh, management structure of football mm -hmm. side moving forward. Yes, absolutely. So big news this Tuesday morning. Jaguars owner Shah Khan released a statement that the Jaguars will not be hiring an executive vice president, which means that Trent Baalke and Doug Peterson will be working even more closely than they already are. And Doug Peterson spoke about that today. From the day I walked in that door and really goes all the way back to our interview process, you know, how collaborative we've been and the questions that we've been able to bounce off each other. and. And I, and I want it to be that way. I want it to be transparent. I want it to be open and honest. And we're not always going to agree. I mean, that's, that's part of this process. But at the same time, you know, we can walk out the door and be united. And, and that's the most important thing, that we're, we're keeping the organization and we're keeping the players first. Um, and that's the biggest thing that, that we've been able to do and, and, and building on that relationship each and every day. So Doug Peterson and Trent Bark. Trent Bulky were already working very closely together. Now they will be even more so. And a lot of people were questioning, when are they going to hire an EVP? Why mm. is it taking so long? Now the decision comes that they aren't going to hire an EVP. And Shad Khan said it, that he's been in the building these past three weeks. He's seen Doug Peterson work, and he has the confidence that he doesn't want to add more to the mix because he feels like what they have right now is working. Right. There's a strong vibe that Doug's the right guy and that he's brought the unity, the, uh, you know, all the things that you expected him to, the positive culture, if you will. And my impression, I haven't talked to Shad, but I've talked to people, you know, around him in the decision a little bit. Um, you know, don't throw something else into the mix yet until you know what's needed in that mix. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now it appears very much that Doug and Trent are working well together. They both talked about it a lot today. When you listen to Doug Peterson talk about the kind of thing, you get the idea that he's not going to say something if he doesn't mean it. There's, yeah. th there's a lot of sincerity there. And Shad used the word pause with the executive vice president situation. I don't think that kind of thing is off the table in the long term. What that will eventually look like if it happens, what an assistant GM could look like, mm -hmm. what a VP of personnel, which is what uh, Trent Baalke mentioned today. You know, um, I think there will be – the Jaguars' overall management structure on the football side won't look exactly like it is now. How it will look, I think, is something that Shad Khan wants to determine over the appropriate amount of time, as you said, Ashlyn, not force something right now yeah. that doesn't need to be forced. Well, it also seems like you have to have the perfect ideal candidate for that, mm -hmm. and you're not going to just fill that position to fill that position and create something like this one. There's already so many moving parts. Everyone's trying to figure each other out. There's so much to do this off season. I just think forcing that right now, it just it doesn't seem the right fit. So I, I hear what you're saying that we shouldn't say that it, the EVP position is closed forever. It's just not right now, right. and that's okay. And again, what you want to do is make sure that if you feel like the direction that Doug's got things moving is good, and all of a sudden you bring in a VP, you know, and it doesn't quite fit, then maybe that runs counter to that. You know, again, at at some point. Shad will talk about the decision publicly and we'll get more of his thoughts on that. But it just seemed like right now 
It's not going to happen in, in the, quote, foreseeable future. So let's make sure people understand that it's paused for right now so that uh, the questions don't continue every time that Doug speaks, every time that Trent mm -hmm. speaks. It doesn't have to be a topic every time now. Yes, the door is closed just for now, and that is our breaking news of the day here at the Scouting Common. We, we come back on Jaguars Drive Time. All about what Trent Bulky and Doug Peterson said at the podium coming up. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. At ViStar Credit Union, you inspire us to deliver on our promise, to do good for our members and our communities. That's why we offer more banking options, like better rates and no hidden fees. We also give back, donating several million dollars to hundreds of nonprofits each year. Better financial lives, stronger communities. ViStar Credit Union. Do good. Bank better. Visit ViStarCU.org slash join. Insured by NCUA. Fans like you have been told that going all out is going too far. But fans like you know better. You're the kind of fan who loves the team as much as your pet. Who paints yourself for game days and dyes your pet's fur to match. You are a rare breed. You are a pet fanatic. Equal parts pet obsessed and diehard sports fan. At Pet Paradise, they're crazy about pets too. The official pet care provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Pet Paradise. It's a new day in pet care. We're back, Jaguars Drive Time from the NFL Scouting Combine, live in Indianapolis from Radio Row. It is Tuesday. It is our first day of Combine coverage here on Jaguars.com. And it was a big day because Trent Balky and Doug Peterson met the media, not for the first time, but this is really the first time where the Jaguars coaching staff is all together. And it's kind of the official first event for the new league year. It's a lot of newness going on. And I will say the biggest thing that I took from the press conferences and the interviews that'll be up soon on Jaguars.com is Doug Peterson and Trent Balky both said with confidence that they're going to be really aggressive in free agency. Yeah, and uh, we asked Doug and Trent on that when, about that when we had them on. Uh, Doug, being the coach, was a little more, I'll say over the top. But he's a little, yeah, we're going to be aggressive. We're do it. Yeah. Trent, being the GM, said something interesting. Uh, uh, the most interesting takeaway I had from it was he said, yes, we're going to be aggressive. And then he talked a little bit about wanting to make sure that, that, that the players they got when they introduced them into the locker room were good enough players that the other players understood why they were signed. Mm -hmm. I think it's an important thing to remember in free agency. These players know who's good and who's not good. Yeah. Trent was basically saying, you don't want to sign a guy just for the sake of signing him, have him come in, not be able to play, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden your contract structure is all out of whack. So um, the other interesting thing that I'm not sure we were planning to talk about, Trent talked a lot about the need to re-sign the mm -hmm. team's own players. Doug talked about that as well. Clearly, you know, it, it takes a while to get to that yeah. because you've got to draft the right guys. But both of them talked extensively about we need to re-sign our own guys. We need to keep guys in the building who are good players. That hasn't happened enough. Boy, that is a um, – it's a pretty good sum up mm -hmm. of the culture and what has gone wrong around here for a while that we've gotten to that point through various things going wrong. Both of these guys know it's imperative that that get fixed and that starts to be a thing that they're known for rather than mm -hmm. known for not doing. Yeah, it's kind of addressing what is outside the building. And truthfully, in, in my five years here, I never heard a GM or coach talk about that. Talk right. about what everyone says is why don't you keep your own players? And this is right. the first time that both of them said that. And I wouldn't take that as, oh, they're absolutely going to re-sign Cam Robinson and DJ Chark. That's that's what, what they must mean. It was more so saying An that overarching prospect thought. starts right. here. Yeah. It's starting to draft your own players and making sure they're the right picks when you draft them. And Coach Peterson says, hey, that starts today. Right. You can't uh, re-sign DJ Chark necessarily just because, oh, we want to sign our own guys. Yeah. But over message. the long yeah. haul, they have to draft well, develop well, get back to that. All GMs want to do it. Dave Caldwell talked about it. Anybody who's been a GM talks about doing that. 
It was interesting, though, to me that they both talked about it with such emphasis mm -hmm. here at their first combine. They clearly know they have to get back to that. They have to start doing that right. It's imperative. How that plays out in the short term is interesting. How it plays out in the long term is imperative. For sure. And another big talking point, I guess you'll say from here, is this room is buzzing about the number one overall pick, and mm -hmm. everyone keeps talking about Evan Neal. So we asked Coach Peterson and Trent Balky there. Who are you taking? That's what you said, right? Who yeah. you got? Who you got? And he said, uh, <laughs> not so fast. Not yet. But the offensive line, and I thought it was interesting when Doug Peterson said, you know, we don't really know yet because we have to see how free agency shakes out. And once we know with Cam Robinson and free agency, okay, then we know how to place the offensive line. Right now, we kind of got to wait for that to know what's going on with this line. Yeah, and there's, there's two weeks to go until free agency. And when they were asked about this, uh, I'm not sure we asked them specifically about the franchise tags, mm -hmm. but when they were asked about free agency and the franchise tag in a, in a local media scrum, if you will, thought was they're not quite there yet they're trying to figure it out that's what you'd expect them to say the negotiating period for free agency I believe starts two weeks from today yep that's when I think we'll start getting an idea of what they're going to be able to do it sounds to me like they'd like Cam back mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really ask much about DJ today but overall it sounds like they would like pieces of the offensive line back they have to figure out what those pieces are going to look like and how realistic it is to bring those guys back Unfortunately for us on Jaguars.com right now, it's stay tuned. Yes, it's a lot of question marks. It's a lot about money and right. injury status. You know, Brandon Linder with his injury status the last year, can he stay healthy to come sure. back? There's there's question marks at every single position of the offensive line, so it's not as easy as saying, we'll just draft Evan Neal and it's all fixed. Mm -hmm. No problem. It, it was interesting. Uh, we asked Doug on the air uh, what positions he liked. And he talked a little bit about uh, tight end. Yeah. Likes the tight end room. Which was interesting. <laughs> likes the running back room. There's concerns there with uh, Travis Etienne and yeah. James Robinson, how healthy they come back. Uh, but obviously when we talked, to, I asked him what he likes about the roster. And he sort of started to answer it. And then the first thing he says, well, quarterback. Duh. So, well, <laughs> and that's a good sign. Yes. Because he clearly likes it. And. He's got a bunch of guys to coach. Yes, he does. We said he set a record for having coaches in the building that have quarterback experience. And he laughed and said, yeah, I know. It was wow. a motto. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. So those are impressions from mm -hmm. uh, the coach and GM's pressers here at the combine. When we come back, we're looking at the prospects and the rest of a busy week here for Jaguars.com at the Scouting Combine. So stay with us. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Fans like you have been told that going all out is going too far. But fans like you know better. You're the kind of fan who loves the team as much as your pet. Who paints yourself for game days and dyes your pet's fur to match. You are a rare breed. You are a pet fanatic. Equal parts pet obsessed and diehard sports fan. At Pet Paradise, they're crazy about pets too. The official pet care provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Pet Paradise. It's a new day in pet care. At ViStar Credit Union, you inspire us to deliver on our promise, to do good for our members and our communities. That's why we offer more banking options, like better rates and no hidden fees. We also give back, donating several million dollars to hundreds of nonprofits each year. Better financial lives, stronger communities. ViStar Credit Union. Do good. Bank better. Visit ViStarCU.org slash join. Insured by NCUA. We're back, Jaguars Drive Time, live from the Scouting Combine here in Indianapolis and live on Radio Row. On a Tuesday where Doug Peterson and Trent Baalke met the media, today was very much all about the coaches and GMs in the NFL, yet every coach in this building. Tomorrow really starts the prospects, and it starts with the wide receivers that will be at the podium. On-field workouts do not start till Thursday, but I'm, I'm excited to see these wide receivers, and it's interesting because it's so obvious everyone talks about the Jaguars' need for speed, and you got to get speed on this roster. But when you look at these wide receivers, they're falling, the top ones at least, mm -hmm. 15 to 20. The Jaguars don't sit there, obviously. They're at 33. So does one of them fall 
that's where, yes, you need speed, but you can't necessarily reach for that position in the first round. Well, it certainly sounds like, you know, I'd be surprised if they took wide receiver number one overall. I think that's a big reach at this point. Nobody really thinks that'll happen. Um, could one of these receivers they're talking about who's rated between 12 and 20 slip to 26 or 27, allow the Jaguars to trade up for mm -hmm. it possibly? Are there enough where they could wait to get one at number 33? Yeah. Those are tough things to speculate about right now with any sort of certainty because it, it's so far off and you're talking about uh, 33 picks in front of it. What was interesting today when Trent was talking on the podium, he mentioned a couple of things that uh, caught my ear. He likes the draft. He said he, he thinks it is, it is a deep draft and very good draft at a lot of different positions. Mm -hmm. That leads me to believe, you know, Trent likes his picks. He likes trading. But it leads me, it leads me to believe that he thinks he's in good shape at the top of a lot of rounds yeah. to get guys that maybe people aren't talking about right now. All people really want to talk about the combine is number one overall. Yes. Um, it sounds like you know, he was asked on the podium. He's not giving anything away. He was asked a lot about the difference between offensive line and edge rusher. He said it's a very deep draft for edge rusher. Maybe that means you take tackle first and edge rusher in the, se yep. rusher in the second round. That's just me playing, not draft Nick. Uh, but it, he likes the draft, and he was asked about possibly trading the pick, and he was very GM-like in it. He said, well, you, you know, you don't say no, but you don't say yes, all of that. I think it'll be tough to trade that pick because <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that there's the value at the top of the draft to entice people to come up. Mm -hmm. But he certainly addressed it, so it's worth uh, 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 somebody going on and hearing what he had to say about it. Most interesting, most interesting takeaway from Trent today, the fact that he thinks it's a deep draft. Mm -hmm. I think they're optimistic that first, second, third, fourth, fifth round, they can get value out of all those spots. Um, that's not a sexy thing to talk about at Combine Day but it could impact the franchise for a long time. Yeah, and a lot of people are also talking about with free agency so soon in two weeks, we're getting asked, okay, well, what about free agency? And we asked Trent Balky, okay, do you add speed in free agency or do you add speed in the draft? And he just looked at us matter of factly and said both. Yeah, and I think the key thing to remember about free agency especially is what Trent talked about of, you know, if guys go off the board at, at the premium spots, meaning you got three or four uh, wide receivers, right, that people are talking about. If two or three of those guys resign, you know they yeah. may not necessarily go spend for the sake of spending. They need to get faster there. You know, I'm not going to speak for Trent. To me, the way you get better at wide receiver in the long run is draft it mm -hmm. because the premier guys often aren't there. Devontae Adams is there. Okay, you, you feel differently about it. But yeah. uh, that strikes me. I just feel it at the top of the second round. Yeah. Wide receiver is where I think they can start making hay with it. But. Trent certainly didn't tease that in any way to us today on Jaguars.com. No, but he can't really tease anything, no. especially at the Combine. you got so much going on that you can't give anything right. away right now. And why would he? He'd be silly, too. Yes, he would. So those are our expectations for free agency in the draft. We are very far away from that, but we are live here at the Scouting Combine, and we have one more segment here for you on Jaguars Drive Time, so stay with us. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Hi folks, Frank Franzi here to tell you where to find the most authentic Southern Pit Barbecue in all of Jacksonville. That's right, Bono's. For 72 years, Bono's has been smoking real pit barbecue right here on the First Coast. Smoked for hours, served in minutes, and always cut to order. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at TIAA Bank Field. Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you want great barbecue, head to Bono's today. If you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
We're back, Jaguars Drive Time, live from Indianapolis, live from the Scouting Combine, and live from Radio Row, a busy Tuesday that we're wrapping up here on Jaguars.com, and we will be here till Friday collecting all kinds of content for you on Jaguars.com. On-field workouts start on Thursday, and tomorrow we have a busy day shooting a lot of behind-the-scenes features, and it was interesting we were asking head coach Doug Peterson what was the most impactful thing of the Combine for him, and he said the interviews are crucial, and those start tonight at 7 o'clock. They're only 15 minutes long, and for Trent Bulky, he said really, he said all of it's impactful, mm -hmm. but he mentioned the on-field workouts, and I thought it was really interesting what he said where we asked a fan, I guess, ex expectations is if a guy runs an awesome 40, it must mean you have to draft him. And he said not necessarily, right. but it forced you to go back and watch more tape and say, why did we miss this? Why is he testing so well? And, and what are we missing on film? Well, coaches historically, and Doug's obviously a longtime coach, yes. love the interview process because it gives them some insight into what they might be dealing with mm -hmm. if, if they get the player, what the guys like to be around. Uh, so I'm not surprised that Doug loves that. To Trent's point, and it rings true, every GM you talk to will tell you, the difference between how the combine is perceived publicly and how it's perceived within NFL circles is dramatically different. Yeah. NFL people are here for the measurables, for the uh, medicals, and uh, a little bit for, I mean, uh, for the interviews, coaches like those, a little bit for the on-field stuff, but teams do not go back, Ashlyn, and on Monday and Tuesday, they don't go in and start tearing magnets off the board and start I throwing them out him. and, and uh, re-rank their board. <laughs> this is a piece of the puzzle, and what Trent said is what I've always heard, and it's, it's exactly right. If a guy excels here, if, if there's a standout, if there's a red flag in one direction or the other, it will cause them to go back, take that magnet aside, and, and discuss that player again. Mm -hmm. And he used the phrase that's dead on and find out what did we miss. Are yeah. we missing something on this guy that we hadn't seen before? And they'll check it, and if they're missing something, they miss something, they'll go back and do the research. It is another piece of the puzzle that causes these teams to go back and make sure that the research they've already done is right. But in no way does this event, you know, you will hear about rising and falling players mm -hmm. from now to the draft. Oh, my gosh, yeah. It's a vastly overrated term, and uh, the combine certainly does not usually cause guys to rise and fall. And usually, guys only rise and fall in one direction. They usually fall down if something negative comes up. Yes. It's hard to rise significantly at the combine. Yeah, and I thought it was interesting. I, I learned this a couple years ago with the medicals and how important it is for someone like Jamison Williams, for example, out of Alabama, who unfortunately tore his ACL in the national championship game. There are going to be so many questions about him, and that was probably the best wide receiver in the mm -hmm. class until that happened so for the chance for each team to get their hands on this guy and right. really see okay how much has he recovered that's big time especially yeah. for a medical standpoint and they'll certainly look at guys like Williams who were hurt last year where the combine really helps these teams is it's their first chance to do a full medical evaluation on mm -hmm. players that they don't know much about they sort of know that Williams has the ACL right what they're looking for primarily is all the hurts, all the past injuries, how it's affected when they do their x-rays. They're looking to see, okay, could this crop up at some point? How, um, how physically able is this player going to be to withstand these things? Mm -hmm. How much wear and tear he already has? Uh, those are the things that aren't very exciting for us to talk about. No. But that once they get behind closed doors and start ranking their boards, it comes into play big time. Absolutely. So a very busy week here in Indianapolis. All kinds of coverage for you on Jaguars.com. A lot of behind the scenes. We have Cynthia Freeland, Charles Davis, Todd McShay interviews coming up this big week. Big week. Big week. Yeah. Busy week. All kinds of coverage on Jaguars.com. So stay with us. Thank you for tuning in to Jaguars Drive Time. We will see you from Indianapolis tomorrow.